B-Bad and Brandon. So I've got to thank fuck I remember to record it. <laughs> <laughs> probably the dinner. Yeah, so normally he does all this back end stuff. So I fucking had a panic attack when I couldn't get this thing to work. But we're here now, so that's the go. <laughs> oh, decent, mate. Fuck yeah, mate. So like, uh, like I said, Johnny B bad, Brando, who couldn't be here. Dean, yourself, bro. We we do one official thing to this thing, and then the rest of it's just organised chaos. It is we yeah. ask you twenty one words, who you are and what you do. Twenty one words. Yeah, and I'm gonna pretend to count them. Hi, my name's Dean McVie. I'm from Scotland, and I am. Um... Three times Scotland strongest man under eighties. Is that twenty one? I think you got two left. Uh, That's one word. Uh, That's two <laughs> words. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gold, bro. Yeah, three <laughs> times, three times Scotland strongest man under eighties. Yeah. Fuck, that's unreal. And recently too, you just won recently, right? Yeah, it was just last Sunday. Uh, wow. for the time. Tell us about that, bro. How was that? I it went well, mate. Um, I had a plan. Uh, I executed it. Um, only like one little slip up, mate. I won four out of five of the events, but um, I've got all I've got little hands, mate, and it doesn't help with frame hold. Oh um, yeah. For a couple, and it's just because it's almost like quite a, a snatch grip, sort of wide grip, and I can't yep. comb my hands under it properly. Yeah, and yeah. It just yeah. it's my hands, mate. And I just can't hold on long enough. So I came about mid-table, but it was enough to still uh, seal the deal, mate, we'll say. Yeah, sweet. What were the other events that you won? What What did the other four? Um, the first event was Max Barbell Overhead. So uh, you get three nominated lifts. So yep. I just done I just done two because yep. I knew, like, what I had to do. But I just done, um, <laughs> I done 120. Yeah, I done 120 and then 130. I yep. just left it because everything a day is like a strategy. Yeah, if yeah, I'd go, yeah. Even though it's a bit crowd pleasing and shit and like entertaining and that, which I'm for, but I'm just burning energy and risking injury going at the next event. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. You got to be mindful of that. Yeah, and if like you said, if you know you you know the field you're up against, you kind of know yeah. who's got what and what they're up against, right? Yeah, totally, mate. And uh, then the next one was a uh, yoke into sandbag. Uh, yep. Took that. That was good. Yep. And then it was max deadlift. I'd done 260 and 280, and I just left it. Yep. Um, yep. It, just, it was just no point to do more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then it was a frame. Yep. <laughs> and then it came back. Yeah, it was shit, mate. Um, and then tacular stones. But oh. you need to run it like 10 metres into it. But um, it, it was all right, mate. It was good. It was good. Yeah, fuck. That's unreal, man. So you must have um, had a pretty good training run into that. What kind of... What sort of time frame do you put into run into a comp like that for yourself? I usually try and give myself at least two months, like yep. minimum. I try and do quite a bit of two month block. Yep. Um, as long as it's not conflicting with anything else, which it did, because oh. um, I done I done Britain's strongest man under eighties, like oh shit, it was like it was six weeks before that or whatever it was, and then I had two powerlifting comps back to back the weekends after that. What? Um, <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Jesus. I just yeah, so I got third at Britain's strongest man under eighties. That, that, yep. that was that was a, you know I was, I was leading at one point going at the sixth event. I think I was like eight points clear, and I just made a couple of wee mistakes, which is that's a sport, which is cool. Yeah. Still humble and all that, and happy to be on the podium. Yep. And then I had the BPO, which is like it's different powerlifting feds, as you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, in Oz and fucking um, the UK, but I done the BPO, won that. Um, yeah. Set a couple of British records, and the weekend after that was the GPC, which is a little bit more higher end. Yep. Uh, won that. Uh, oh. I actually just got my Europe and World invite this morning. My oh. email. <laughs> Fucking you, beauty. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be like part of like Team UK or whatever it is, or Britain or whatever the fuck it is. Yep. Um, and then I sort of just had a couple of weeks just to cut my weight back a little bit um, yep. to make under 80s, which was a wee bit interesting this time because I'm, I'm putting on a little bit more tissue. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But what did you um, title in the powerlifting comps, bro? Um, oh shit, I should probably know that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, it was like uh, I ran the BPOs a mock week because I was like, right, let's. I've not been on the platform a year and a half because of all yep. fucking corona. Um, yeah, I think it was like I think I got like six sixty 
for 82.5 and I felt like could have done a lot more and then I've done about I think it was like 700 or something total um, but yeah yeah, for the GPC but I, I was happy mate I, yeah. I, was, I was there I was there I was there to set a total and one and that was it yeah, I wasn't yeah, doing yeah. anything like stupid everything's calculated again mate yep. looking at the other guys like lifts and stuff right yep. is that enough is that not am I being stupid am I being smart yep Yep. You know, crack, mate, man. mate, the big question then, fuck over a six week period, well, seven week period, you've done two strongmans and two powerlifting meets. Does that work about right on my math? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <A bit rough. laughs> how do you, how on earth do you juggle training for something like that? Steroids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking ultimate recovery machine. Exactly. Sleep and gear. <laughs> fucking beautiful! I fucking love it. Do you so for your um for, for your uh, the strongman training? You obviously must use a bit of powerlifting sort of modality in there and blend it up yeah. a little bit so you can sort of chop and change. Yeah, yeah, mate. They work both good together. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's a win-win, isn't it? It's not like bodybuilding yeah, yeah. or something when you're absolutely just fucking clip. Yeah, um, and it just works. I just need to be quite conjugated a little bit at times yep. trying to add on. Yep, yep. Like trying trying to do it. Like I've done a really good training block, like an amazing training block going at the Britain's strongest man the race. Yep. And I was still implementing a bit of powerlifting there and then. Yep. And then I was just in a state of recovery right after that for the two weeks after I've gone into the powerlifting because I'm not going to get any stronger. Yep. I'm beat up. Um I was still like I've still I think I came I think I came off the trend and meant because I was like I was on it for quite a while. <laughs> Everything's got limits. <laughs> it was it was getting to me mate, mentally. I was getting a wee bit fucking wild, like so. I had to calm it down a wee bit. Aye, but I'm all right now, mate. <laughs> Jesus, I'm open a bit geary. I don't care. Yeah, it's quite a blackish, blackish taboo subject. I'm like, people need to know. Um, it's popularise is not the right word, but it's people like yourself. Um, are more willing and open and happy to talk about it, which I think is good because yeah, everyone's fucking doing it because it's all non-tested sport. But yeah. for some reason, they're not happy to discuss it openly. Like it's it's the fear of judgment, mate. Yeah, that's what I think it is. And uh, I don't give a fuck. That's yeah. it. So, and I've got sponsors and stuff. It says you're not happy, then fucking bin me because yeah, I don't yeah. fucking care. And I really do believe in my sponsors. They're fucking great. But yeah, yeah. I'd rather have my integrity yeah, and honesty absolutely. and get value. You know I mean? Integrity, I think, is the big one. Like, you know, how many guys, girls you'll see out there, like either coaching or lifting themselves, and you just know what they're doing. But, you know, it's meat, veg, sleep, and really good program that got me to this one, you know? It's like, yeah. come on. Let's just get some honesty well, out there in the world, eh? <laughs> yeah. Fucking some of the chicks have got fucking bigger Adam's apples than me and you. And I'm like, oh, all right. and totals, bro. Right. Yeah, I right, bigger totals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking absolutely, <laughs> fucking lootly, dude. Yeah, I think it was um, yeah. we had Flash Dan on um, a couple of weeks ago, and he was chatting about yeah. how he mixes his training modality up, and you know, he was a huge fan of um, getting his powerlifting in there and just sort of structuring, you know, strong yeah. the side or and just picking when things had to go first. I think. That was yeah. a pretty interesting thing to hear. Uh, Dan's, uh, Dan's like, but he's probably open up. Me and him are like our biggest rivals in the UK. Yep. Uh, no, probably Europe. Technically, because he's Europe's strongest man or eighties. And yep. I'm, uh, I'm like two-time runner-up. Yep. Uh, so I did two, 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 two years in a row, two seconds, which is fine, man, because it just puts more fire in the belly. But yep. Dan's, Dan's unbelievable. Yep. Um, uh, I've already told him I look up to him and all that kind of stuff. He knows yeah. I'm biting at his heels and that, but like I'll yeah. always look up to him. That's um, real. Yeah, a lot, a lot of respect. That's cool. It's a, a friendly. How does it go on comp day with you two guys? Even though, is it a friendly rivalry still on the day, or we just leave that to uh, the side on comp day? But, but we're still friends, mate. But there's always yeah. a lot of tension, mate. There was always there's always a lot of tension, mate, because we both yeah. fucking want it just yeah, as yeah. much as the next guy. But you can, you can feel it in the air, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Particularly the the two of you guys are so close competitively as well. Mate, it was it was it was close like but he was getting like something and then I was getting something and it was just back and forth. 
Yeah. And then obviously yeah. the twins won it, which they were the underdogs, and they'll probably admit that as well because the more it was more hype about just me and Dan, and then yeah. obviously the underdogs can always win, and then they just came through. Yeah. Uh, me, me and I were like, pre- really at the top the whole majority of the time, but they were like right so consistent, and yeah. then Flash fucked up on something, and yeah. then I fucked up on something, but they were still consistent. Yeah. And it just, yeah, yeah. Just crept over ever so, and then it just prevailed, and I was like, "This is strong, man." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? So credit. That's unreal. I mean, I know for me watching it, like that's the kind of thing I, I really enjoy about the sport is like you you, you one little slip up and you'll drop all a bunch of paces within the competition, and then the next guy will come through. Like it's totally. Mate, yeah. I was I was eight, eight points clear going into the. I think it was a frame holder. It was a bag throw. Yep, and it fucking plummeted after like one or two events. Fuck. Eight points, mate. That's a, like that's a, that's a lot going in. Yep, yep, Co- yep. Coming in the end of a comp, it was eight eight events in one comp, man. That's Fuck. that's very unheard of, and it was brutal. Yep. Like, everyone was fucked. Yeah. Like, it, I, I'm not used to the heat because obviously I'm fucking Scottish and that, and it was a hot day. Yep, yeah. I was running like I was running Halo. Yep. Friend base and like Anadrol. Yep. And then I was taking more when we got to like the tenth top ten guys in the finals, and I was just fucking me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, f- man, that was rough. Like <laughs> fucking cooking. How was the body? How did the how does the body pull up from a comp like that? Mate, it was it was I was a three and a half hour drive on owner. I had to reflect as well after it. <laughs> and I got home, man, and I felt felt fucking beat, man. proper beat. Because <laughs> I, I, I caught, mate, it was like an eight, an eight event comp, and I call it a TED dump where like your bloods because I was taking fast acting as well. Base, yeah, what goes up has to come down, yeah, you yeah, know I mean? absolutely. Adrenaline, caffeine, gear, and I just went fucking <laughs> when I got home, and I was like, I genuinely felt like I had a come down, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bye. Fucking Jesus, bro. Well, coming off such a big prep for yourself, what do you get up to now? Like, what's Oz next comp for you? Do you take a bit of a break or what do you what do you run for now? Uh I've got I've got three more. Um I've got Scotland's strongest man under 90s. Yeah, four weeks on Sunday, which yeah. I hold that title as well. So I'm trying to protect that. So you'll have the eight um, in the nineties. Yeah, I've got both. Um Fuck yeah. It's just it's good, man. Because last year when um because the COVID and that sort of fucked everything up a little bit, but yep. they still made the comp happen. Like yep. the first event, I tore my calf on the farmers, <laughs> and I just had to do the whole comp on a torn calf. Jesus I Christ! Won, I was just, I was raging, man. Eh? I was just like, I just used pure adrenaline and rage to get me through. <laughs> Fuck so, it. How many events did you have to do much running or walking with the implements with on that one? Yeah, there was one that was really, really bad after it. It was a bag throw into sandbag run. And I just, <laughs> I just had to get on with it, mate. <laughs> uh, it, was, uh, it was rough, mate. Because all the adrenaline dropped and then, like, my leg just went wooden for, like, a week. And it was like, I've got this big fucking tear in it now, man, and it's rough, like. <laughs> Did uh, it so, up a tree? Yeah, yeah, oh, I went, I went, like, oh. Purple and blue and shit. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> what other? Kind of, what I man? Do you find have you come across many injuries or sort of speed bumps for yourself with all the training, bro? Or um, no, nah, that was the worst. That, that was that was the worst one because I was an acute injury. But uh, sometimes I get sciatica, so it's sort of chronic. Yeah, but I'm um, usually I'm all right, mate. Usually I'm all right. Um, I'm not done anything severe like some lads, which I'm grateful to not be. Getting serious injuries yet? Yep. And um, that's yep. the only thing that will slow me down. I've got a fucking. I've got, we've all got niggles. I've got n- about three niggles now, but this yeah. is a sport, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm all right, mate. I've, I've been. I'm. I I've got a physio. I do hot and cold. Yep. Yep. All that shit, mate. So I'm. I'm not too bad, mate. Yeah, yeah, mate. I think if we're not pushing the fucking engine hard enough, there's there's always going to be something there, isn't there? 
a hundred percent, mate. You know, yeah. but what we're, at the end of the day, we're breaking our bodies to get stronger. We're gonna yeah. get fucking niggles and injuries. Yeah, yeah. I think one one of the sort of jokes I have with one of my mates I train with is like, we'll get to you know four weeks out from comp, and then it's you know the shoulder, and you're like, ah, oh, that's gonna be the problem for this training run, right? The shoulder's gonna yeah, be yeah. a fucking issue. Ah, <laughs> oh, like, yeah, oh, the yeah. knee, yeah, righto. The fucking knee's the yeah. one we work with this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking shut up. <laughs> yeah, you just never fucking know which one it's going to be, and then it'll fucking rear its ugly head at you. <laughs> yeah, but yes, you know, it's adapting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 100%, man. I think that's what makes a, a smart lifter and, you know, or a smart relationship with a coach, like that ability to provide structure to this training system, but at the same time, oh, yeah, that's a bit yeah. fucked up. This is how we fucking deviate and move across that yeah. rather than stick to, to an exact system or plan. You know, just sort of reflecting mm-hmm. on my mate, he was, you know, COVID's a crazy time to try and train through as well. You know, right? You're fucking yeah. locking down, not locking down. Fucking comps are on, comps are off. Like, it's fucking tricky. How'd you guys go with that? Um, I was I was grateful enough to have a, in the first lockdown anyway, and the second one, to be fair. Um, and then we had that sort of gap in the middle where we could actually go at the fucking gyms. Yeah. Um, that, that's what happened in the UK. I know it's a bit different over in Oz and New Zealand and that. Yep. But um, I was just training my, my my mate's garage the whole time. Oh, perfect. And they're, and they're all just like, they're all just like, oh, you need to stay at home and that. I'm like, fuck off. I was like, if I lose my mental health, I end up fucking killing someone. And <laughs> I, like, I had to, I had to, I just, I just genuinely, I was just like in a fucking shed, training yep. away, getting stronger and stronger. Yep. And then I just came out, and then I done like the Arnold British amateurs and won that, and then qualified yep. for Ohio. Yep. So I'll meet like Arnold Schwarzenegger next year and stuff, and. Oh. All that. Yeah, yeah, because it's meant to be, uh, it's been postponed twice this year, mate. Yep, yep. Um, but whatever, I've still got that qualification for next year. Yep. Um, yep. So we'll go to Ohio, we'll, do the, we'll meet other, other pros and. Yeah. You know, all that shit. What a fucking adventure. That um that trip to the Arnolds for that would be like something else, won't it? Yeah, yeah. They've got, they've got, um we've got the, the UK festival uh, yep. coming up. Arnold's going to be there. Oh. I'm not even going. I, I'm not going out because I want to meet him as a competitor, not a fucking, a fucking fan or a spectator. Because yep, yep, different, different man. Eh? He, yeah, he'll yeah. prefer that. Yeah, that'd be pretty yeah. fucking cool. So I know they they do want Arnold's down here. Obviously, COVID kicked its ass the other year, but he normally shows his face right around the right time when someone's squatting something fucking special. So. A couple, couple, couple of the big Aussie lifters over here have got a photo or a video of them squatting, you know, something, something pretty sexy. And then Arnold's sitting in the fucking background, gives them the big fucking handshake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. What a like fucking... Like handshake. Yeah, what a <laughs> fucking experience. That that would fucking be, hey. It's going to be uh, it's gonna be good, hopefully, because I always, like, when I, when I do, like, a top-end comp, uh, I've done it at the Worlds, I wear, like, my green beret, because I've yep. served in the Royal Marines. Um, yeah. I wear that. So hopefully it might just clock that and be like, oh fucking hell, I quite like that, and then go over. But um, I'm going to wear it at Worlds this year in November. But uh, Mikhail Shivakov's going to be there. Who's yeah. Like Russian pro, fucking to like that the guy. Dude's an alien, alien, bro. <laughs> yeah. So he wears his lid, and I'm going to wear my lid. Hopefully yep. he doesn't speak a word of English, but there'll yep. be that little fucking mutual respect where I'm just going to be, you wow. know, shake his hand and all that, and I'll yeah. just, ah, it's like this, ah. My two favourites are Mateusz Kierskowski yep. and, uh, and uh, Meek Kelly, because I, I like the East European too, over yep. fucking, like, the UK and America and that, but... Yeah, that the Mikhail, man, I always remember, he's got that famous video that went viral with that fucking face just exploding with blood as he's man. fucking out that big deadlift, like... <laughs> yeah. It's fucking nasty. Like he's just fucking face exposed, isn't it? Yeah, that's something, mate. <laughs> that's something that I aspire to. Like that's a yeah. fucking yeah. That's a dead. That's what a deadlift is, right? Yeah, yeah, totally, mate. Fuck Off it, the mate. And, um, We've been on the circuit. Have you had much opportunity to to meet some of the bigger names out floating around in the heavyweights and stuff like that? Um, I have, I've, like, I've met and competed alongside. Um, I competed alongside Nick Best. Yep. Uh, Terry Hollands. Yep. Uh, uh, Ronald Heinler, Evan Toots. Um, I've been ref by like Mark Felix and Eddie Hall and oh. uh, uh, is it Benny Magnuson? Benny Magnuson. Yep. Yeah, there's a, there's, yeah, there's a couple of big cars they like. They were uh, all nice guys. Yeah, that's um, what I was going to say. That was my next question. What are they like? They're all good lads. They're all fucking sound, man. They're all yep. fine. Yep. Just, yeah, a wee bit like when I'm a, 
I was a wee bit nervous when I met Nick Best. Yep. Because obviously you just obviously I've seen I've seen Mark Felix and Eddie and that many times and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Yep. But I seen Nick Best and I think he fucked up one of the events and he was a bit pissed off and I was sort of just standing there, I was like <laughs> awkward. <laughs> oh. like, you know, that guy was pretty angry, mate. <laughs> and you said um military history for yourself too. That's um yeah. did you when did you start doing that? Like straight up as a young fella or? Uh, I joined when I was 20 and then I yep. left when I was about 24, uh, just yep. ended, pushing 25, just done yep. my minimum time because there was nothing much going on. But that was a that was a good experience. Definitely. It was definitely a precursor for the sport. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it lined me up mentally. Yep. We'll say. Yeah. Hi. Hell yeah. Were you sort of training back in the day then, or how did you fall into powerlifting and strongman? I've done, believe it or not, I've done bodybuilding training since I was like 15. Bodybuilding training, I wasn't a bodybuilder. You know? Yeah, yeah. People say I'm a bodybuilder. I'm like, and the magazines, all the back. YouTubes. Yeah, yeah, all that fucking shit, man. You know what <laughs> I mean, I was, I was, I was, when I was doing bodybuilding, I don't think the fucking YouTube was even that big. And I was like, yeah. I had like Flex and Muscle and Fitness magazines. That's where I was getting on my, my set yeah. And I mean, I spent I like fucking about 40 magazines and that's where I was learning it for. But yeah, uh, done, done like five bodybuilding shows, like natural ones. I wasn't yep. on the gear then. Yep. Uh, got to the British finals and stuff and that, but it was too opinionated, mate, because you're, yep. you're getting judged on the way you look. And yeah, I just, absolutely. I just had enough, mate. And I was like, come on, I'm going to get the fucking strength. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that was that. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny one, isn't it? The, the, um, the, the stage stuff, like, because like you said, it's just opinion, isn't it? So, it's what they like on that day. They might not like you. They might like you. You know, do you train in a gym? Are you yeah. affiliated with anyone? Are you coached by someone they like? They don't like? All these things come down to opinion on it. Yeah. And I didn't like that because I've seen, also I'm backstage, I'm seeing things, a lot of these things that are maybe a lot of the audience won't see. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying there's a lot of politics in bodybuilding, but it's definitely it's bit like any sport, to be honest, so as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing mm. with a strength sport, mate. It's uh, weight on the bar wins, right? Exactly, mate. If you do fucking X amount of reps more, you're fucking stronger. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did you always <laughs> find you had a um like, like like a natural level of strength that sort of came came with it when you got into weights, or there's something you bet? I mean, obviously you work hard for it as well, but yeah. Um, I would say I had a, a wee base of training. Uh, like I'm quite open about mental health and all that kind of stuff. I've been on the news trying to promote the sport. Yep. Promote Royal Marines, mental health, and that. Like, yep. I started when I was 15, but the reason why I'd done, I started lifting me, it's like my mum committed suicide and I never had a dad. So, like, my upbringing was like quite, like, it was quite difficult, we'll say. Uh, it'd be for anyone that would go through that sort of trauma. And then I had to convert that negative, bad energy yep. towards something, and that was lifting weights. Yeah, so, yeah. that was my that was my coping mechanism or like my deterrent to keep my mental health at bay. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just channeled it and channeled it. Even though it was quite negative, um, it was still getting me through. Yep. And then eventually I started, I believe it or not, I started meditating and all that kind of stuff as well. And I started yep. being a bit more conscious of why I'm, yep. I'm feeling like this and that. And I eventually forgave myself and all that kind of stuff. And, yep. and then I'm, I'm trying to help other people's mental health now because I forgave myself and, I, and I'm, you know, I'm at this stage of my life where, like, I can help people. Yeah, not that. I uh, mental health's an interesting one, mate. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, man. And for your stories, man, that's brutal, man. And then, you know, it, shut. <laughs> yeah, sh- sh- fucking no words for it, absolutely. But mm. but it's unreal to see that you come forward and openly talk about it, and then being able to help others through it. Like mm. other other people doing stuff and struggling must be stoked to be able to hear you talk, and then be able to even reach out and chat to you as well. Mm. I've had some um, I've had some really, really interesting messages from people saying yep. you may have caused you may have deterred bad things from happening, we'll say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know what I mean, on like potentially fatal things and that. Yeah. And I'm like, that's just giving value and something to the world. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm fucking winning in I'm contributing something proper here. I'm not just a lot of people just take. Yeah. And take and they're greedy. And I'm like, you know, take a bit, earn it, but give back out. Yeah, hundred percent. And do you find um, platforms like social media and stuff like a pretty handy one just to get your message out there, be able to communicate and chat to people? 
Yeah, yeah, I, I think I use Instagram a lot. I don't use Facebook anymore that much. Um, it's just I think it's just dated now, isn't it? Yeah, probably real, agree. Right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's, I think social media can be quite toxic. Um, so I try and take a back foot or something. So it is Legion, it's a big game in it at the end of the day, uh, bringing clients in and stuff and gonna bring them value, but you know, it, it can be you can it can be quite addictive. Um, so I just need sometimes stay off my phone. Yeah. Being the present a little bit more, but it does work. I think I'm fucking class for it, man. But yeah, yeah, it does work, mate. <laughs> I think the good thing, you know, with you and your, like you said, like you're, um, you're not, you, 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 you are who you are on your Instagram and your social media. You're not sort of trying to be someone else behind it, which mm. you see too many people trying to be, which is just yeah, influencers. Like, yeah, fucking show the <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's a scary time. There'll be fucking TikTokers and whatever else there fucking is. Oh, fucking bunch of fucking bell ends, man. Yeah. I know for me <laughs> one of the um, most exciting buttons I've just discovered I had to use properly on my phone is the do not disturb button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's fucking, fucking excellent because I got the poor old I got the old Apple Watch and it's set up to vibrate and then if you end up leaving that on all day, your fucking poor old thing just goes bananas the whole time and then yeah, I don't yeah. know you, but I just end up with stress and anxiety about how fucking busy the world is right now. Yeah. I yeah, totally man. That fucking good old do do not disturb button could be very handy for a lot of fucking people out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. Get off the fucking phone and like look look up rather than keep fucking looking down on your phone. Yeah, yeah, fuck, hundred percent, bro. So, are you still meditating stuff these days, or? Eh, uh, not as much as I should be, mate. Yeah. Um, my fucking brain goes at hundred miles an hour usually. <laughs> as I'm drinking a can of rain at fucking ten in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just morning over there at the moment, isn't it? It's almost not. We're, we're at night time. We're almost finished for the night, which is always pretty good. Was well, that about seven o'clock over there? Yeah, for you? Seven o'clock for us over here. Be, yeah. We got steak for dinner, so that'll be lovely. That's class, mate. I don't know what hold you up there, eh? <laughs> no, you're all right, bro. Doing pretty good. Aye. So, how do you do your pro- your training program for yourself, bro? How do you like to split things up? That's what I'm always interested to know for strong men. Um, well, I used to get uh, coached by Shane Germain, yeah, uh, who runs MST Systems, who's yeah, yeah. coaches the same as Dan's. Yeah. Um, I was with him for about a year and year and a good bit. Um, learned a lot from him. Like again, I'm a I'm a I'm a coach myself. I've been PT for like six years. Yep, done my level, my level four S and C, you know that. But um, I always just a quite a basic bitch fucking approach, mate. Just uh, pull, push, legs. Yep. Or like lower body, and then events. Yep. Four training sessions a week. Yep. Um, and that's it, mate. And the, the other three days is just solely focused on recovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's it. I think less is better sometimes in strength. Yep. Yeah, more time for that body to recover and grow, right? Totally, mate. I think people do too much usually. Yep. And then just that um I think that fatigue things that is the big one that kills people, right? And then you just walk Oh fuck I it's a nervous system, isn't it? You know, yep. like it's getting absolutely chewed up all the yep. time, especially if you're trying to get stronger as well. Yep. yep. You know what I mean? I just try to do hypertrophy we'll say when I, I obviously it still stresses your your yep. central nervous system, but with strength it's it's a lot of deeper, we'll say. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you know we see too many people doing doing reps or sets that they just won't, they just don't need to do, right? Totally, mate. Totally. As um, you know, as a, I do a little bit of hypertrophy training, but I'm going to have to start train uh, changing it now because I'm genuinely getting to that point where I'm like, I'm getting too big for the under eighties. Yeah, gotcha. So I'm going to have to like really fucking do like, and start doing like eight sets of three and shit. Yeah, it's just going to be volume, but low reps because yep. of these weight cuts are getting shit mate yeah, fuck. <laughs> you, you guys do a 24 hour weigh in for strong men yeah yeah but you usually do yeah uh, that's a saving grace for me mate <laughs> yep. yeah yeah what would you walk God. around at? what's your walk around weight i'm probably about 87 or 88 now yeah and i was like i was under 80 on fucking sunday jesus <laughs> bro <laughs> I started taking D balls as well, so yep. just going to put like water on as well. There's a and I'm running like, that. yeah, yeah, there will be. I'm, I'm on like a mellow test and anfit, uh, yeah. which is just a slow release, and that's it. Yeah. Um, but it's just I'm just getting a bit thicker. 
Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you'd you'd make a path to stay in the nineties eventually? Is that what you'd be thinking, or you try and stay? Mate, in the I've I've full intent on fucking winning world strongest man under eighties one day, um, yeah. and I won't I won't stop until it happens. Yep. So I'll stay under eighties yep. predominantly until that happens. Or yep. I'll do it as long as I physically can if it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, I live and breathe this, so you know everyone's everyone's got full intent on doing it. Yeah. You know. Yep. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. That commitment and dedication, like that's that big thing. Like I think you, you need that big picture goal to drive you towards it, right? Like you need to. Hundred percent, mate. You need to fucking eat that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, so, and then, um, what other big world events sort of pop up over your way, bro? For you to have a lift in over that way, anything else? Uh, well, the the ones I've got is Arnold, Ohio, the GPC, yep. Uh, yep. sort of European Worlds, or what was going on, and yep. just uh, the official Strongman Games. I've done. Um, there's a thing called the BNSF, yep. um, uh, British Natural Strongman Federation. I was with them before I got in the gear. Um, I've done like the world's there twice. I went over to Finland. Yeah. And won it, won it the second year. Yep. And it was like, and that's like technically they call it like world's natural strongest man sort of thing. I don't know what, whatever the, what the tailor is, brand it is, but yep. done that. And then the same year I went to world's strongest man in America. What? And my, and I was like, I was like, fucking hell. Like, I'm sure it was the same year. And then I got there and I was still, I was natty. I never took anything. Yeah, uh, gone to World Strongest Man. I've only been once, and I just wanted to be a good example for everyone to go. You don't need fucking gear to get to the top. You don't need it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I want to be a good example. Of, like you don't need fucking gear. It's hard work, training, you're fucking living and breathing it. And then obviously, I didn't place too high. Like I was a bit like just below my table. I was like, right, I've done this. I've completed the natural world most. Yeah. Okay. The strength and competing in world level and powerlifting and all that, and yaddy yaddy fucking yeah. And I was like, right, I'm gonna get on the gear now. Yeah, I'm yep. fucking 30 year old, my testosterone's dropping. I've been doing this literally half my life. Yeah, you know what I mean. I've got that permission to fucking take gear when you've got these little fucking young spunkers, <laughs> like 17, 18 year old banging trend. I'm wow. like, are you fucking mad? Yep. You know what I mean. Oh, but let them talk I was just the going to say the same thing. Like I think it's a testament to to yourself in your approach towards it. You know, you achieved physically everything you could out of your fucking body, mm. and then you fucking looked at going down that path. Yeah, so there is people don't even try and get a quarter of what their body could do, and then they yeah. just fucking take them everything. <laughs> That's that all in, and yeah. I believe in going all in. But do it at a fucking appropriate age. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. It's a shame. It's a shame because it's influencing social media again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And potentially, you know, they're, they're not going to get to their actual potential that they could have been because, you know, save the good stuff for when you need it. Like if you can still keep progressing and making gains and you're doing well in, in your chosen path, then fucking you don't need to reach for that stuff straight away. Not, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Like if... Or can you get to a certain point? And you're like, right, I'm really hitting plateaus here. Yeah, I'm not progressing. Then fucking take it. Yeah, but hold yourself accountable. You're taking a fucking drug at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, that's another that's fucking one as well, bro. Fucking wins you, if anything bad happens. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly right, bro. And I'm covered, you... in acne. covered in acne. I'm like, ah, sound. Yeah. <laughs> and how do you go <laughs> juggling everything with your coaching and stuff, bro? What's that, man? How do you go juggling all your training with all your coaching, etc.? Um, I just like obviously I do my own training and that now. I'm not always saying any more. I've let myself. I've moved yeah. on. He was fucking very, very professional. I'm grateful on that for having yeah. me as a client. He's fucking great. Um, and I'll just implement that into my own clients. So I'm predominantly online. Yep. I only do about ten to twelve PT sessions, one to one a week. Yep. I pay my rent, I train, and I fuck off. But I'm yep. mainly online. I've actually got a lot of a lot of programming to do today. Ah. Um. But uh, it's good to have a fucking laptop. So I remember my missus just now. Yeah. Um, she's just upstairs. I was just like, I was just turning around. And I was like, I'm going to be on a podcast quite shortly. He was like, How long? I was like, In five minutes. He's like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, think, I mean, that's the cool thing with the world we got these days. Like the um, the the face to face coaching is no longer a necessity as a as a coach, right? 
it's if you're good at, if you're good at what you do, you can yep. get fucking very very busy very very quickly as yeah. long as you can prove it. At the end of the day, me winning all these comps and that, because and then I'm not a businessman, but I know how to fucking think like one. This is all lead gen. Yep. This is turning up, putting these posts as organic strategies. People yep. are seeing it and going, right, this guy's fucking doing it. Yep. He's delivering. Look at his clients. I want a fucking piece of that. Yeah, 100%. And that's why I went to Shane, because I've seen Shane lift in, going fucking crazy. I was like, and he was called the dragon. I was like, right. There's a reason he's called the fucking dragon. He must be fucking crazy or something's going on. <laughs> his clients was Dan. And I was like, right, it's fucking Dan Ashcroft. I was like, this guy's obviously really good at what he does. And yeah. that's what brought me towards him just by doing a couple of little posts on Instagram. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's... And I was like, the rest is history, mate. Fucking done, bro. And do you find, are you mostly working with strong, strong, strong man coaching stuff or a bit of powerlifting or... Who's sort of getting attracted your way, or who? Um, I would. I've got like people. Uh, like I just done. I had a client there, uh, D. She just competed in the Scotland Strongest Women under seventy fours. I think it is. And yeah. now she's Scotland Strongest Women. So yeah. one of my clients is like Scotland Strongest Women, which is quite cool. Yeah, uh, I've got, that's cool. But it's, it's it is mainly like sort of strong man, strong women, powerlifting. But I've got a lot of people that are just doing, just genuinely trying to get stronger in the gym. Yeah, um, which is cool with me, but I still got a couple of them and then I'm like, oh, I want to lose weight and all that kind of stuff. Or this and that. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not your person to go to. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I just say it's like, get fucking eat, get yourself in a calorie deficit and just fucking, or go to a PT. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and that, I mean, that's a, um, you know, that's a testament to yourself as well. Like, you know, how many people out there who are just literally trying to make bucks would just say yes to everyone. You know, it does a disservice to that person that's reaching out, right? Totally, mate. It's, you're attract, you're attracting the, that that right clientele, isn't it? Yep. Like, fucking, I'm mega grateful for the situation right now, but I'm like maxing it with my fucking online. Yep. And it's it's good, but more people, not more problems, but more time to have an improvement to that as well. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. And now, mate, being over your side of the world, mate, have you ever kicked around with Highland Games before or anything like that? I haven't, mate. But it's it's definitely the pipeline. You know, we've got like a big heritage with stones and stuff. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, and the nickel stones and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And, you know, there's just so many manhood stones up mainly north, up in the Highlands, and I'm going to play around my name. Yeah. And the Denny stones. Yeah, um, people are asking me to do it, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'll get a shot. <laughs> yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you guys, yeah. um, I don't, I don't know a lot of the history, but you guys do have some stones floating around through the countryside and stuff, right? And then, um, yeah, you can go around and pick them up and do some cool stuff with them. Mate, they're just fucking sitting there, mate. <laughs> like, you pick it up, you pick it up, get the photo, yeah. and then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's unreal. Did you see the doco they did on the Iceland stones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. mate. Brilliant. Phil, Phil Stacker, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Fuck, yeah. I would. Brilliant. We've had, um, there's a lad, Runa, um, we've had on the podcast. He, he's an Icelandic lad, um, trains out of Thor's gym, and um, he keeps saying, as soon as this world's open, you've got to come over and visit. We'd fucking love to get over there and have a crack at some of those stones. Mate, that'll be fucking class. I was meant to, I was meant to go to Iceland for my 30th, but lockdown hit uh, the first time. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to visit young Paul Sigmarsson's Grave. I wanted to play a room with them, like obviously the Icelandic stones. Uh, yep. Go to Forge Gym, all yep. that kind of stuff, mate. Because it's just, I think the, the the strength heritage behind Iceland's probably equally as unique as Scotland, anyway. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. In my opinion, definitely. I think they, I think the two countries are the two top hitters for um stones, anyway. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent, man. And man, a curious question: Do you have a, a favorite event when you do do your um? For strongman, what's your uh, the one you love the most? Or? Uh, I've, I've, I've probably got two. Yep. Uh, I like I like uh, frame carry. Yep. Even though like a frame hold breaks me, a frame yep. carry is good. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, fucking weird because my grip doesn't go too quick. It's just yep. it's just a fucking I hate that fucking frame hold. Everyone hates it. Um, or just yoke. Um, I'm fucking really good at yoke. I've done like a a 400 kilo yoke for 10 meters and I think I weighed like 82 kilo and yeah. uh, but uh, fuck yeah <laughs> fuck me up like <laughs> fuck that's fucking epic dude fucking love uh, 
Mate, what, what I like to do towards the end here is I have 10 very random questions for you. Are, mm -hmm. you. are you ready? These are pretty strange, pretty out there, and you have to come up with the first thing that comes into your head. Okay. Right. Is it weird? <laughs> yeah, we, can, we might get a little weird. What fear would you like to overcome? What fear? Yeah. Um, shit. Proper putting on the spot here. I'm really yeah. shattered. I'd probably say heights. You and me both, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't. Not buy that fun. Things, buy things are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, this is a good one. It's a two part question. Um, who was a good friend of yours? What is their name? Ryan Miller. Now, Ryan Miller has just been kidnapped. Okay. Now, you've got uh -huh. to go and drop the ransom money off for him. What song uh -huh. are you going to play in the car while you're driving to drop the ransom money off? Uh, Pina Colada. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think you'd be when you left school? Uh, a Royal Marine. Yes, yeah, sick. And you followed through and fucking crushed it. What, yeah. um, what's the next skill you would like to learn? Oh, fucking, I don't even know how to describe it. You know, like YouTube design and shit. Like, people do. You know, like edit, you know, like make yeah, fucking yeah, YouTube yeah. videos and content. Yeah, yeah, what it's yeah. called. I was going to say guitar, but I'm going, I'm going to go with YouTube. I like it. I like it. What makes you grumpy? Laziness. Yes. Most embarrassing moment you've ever had? Fucking hell. <laughs> Honest. Oh, fucking hell, man. Uh, oh, God. Hey, what the fuck? What the fuck? I'll take the charger out of the phone because I need to move a bit in front. Uh -oh. I don't know. I don't know. I can't recall anything specific. That's okay. Um, I, might, I might pop back up. Maybe ask me at the end. We, we'll come back to that. Most proudest moment? Um, probably believe probably being on STB News and promoting um mental health and all that kind of stuff. Like yeah. I said before, um, just because of the amount of people that reached out to me. Yep. Um, the exposure for that, I'd say that. Yeah, fuck, that's an incredible thing you did, man. Um, mm -hmm. now you're about to buy a boat. What are you going to call it? Pegasus. Yeah, Pegasus. Now, that's a nice boat. <laughs> Who is the messiest person you know? Messiest. <sighs> fucking hell. I don't really fucking... I'm a bit of an introvert, mate. I don't really hang around with that many people. So I can't really think of someone. Yep. I'll need to pass on that one. I can't even forget it on me. What is, the <laughs> sure. worst, what is the worst smell you've ever smelled? Um, a dead cat that got Ooh. caught in an engine when I was in Albania. Well, fuck. Oh, that was fucking rough, that. <laughs> <laughs> and the engine was turned on? And so it gets cold during the night. Yep. And then obviously the, the engine's obviously probably going to stay quite warm for a while. Yep. And that, that cat obviously got in it. And it. Didn't really know it was going to turn back on eventually. Uh oh. <laughs> then you got yeah. To... Yeah, yeah, it's fucked up, like. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> fucked, bro. Mate, um, mate, we'll say that's been fucking excellent to have you on there, bro, man. It's a, it's a huge pleasure to get some people from your side of the world on. We're going to work, make our way through UK and Scotland and everyone and get some of you guys interesting on. Man, uh, give us a bit of a plug, bro. Where do people find you? Where are you out there in the world if people want to reach out and find out more about you and your coaching, etc.? Yeah, it's just uh, it's just D McVie Strength, uh, M C V I E Strength. Uh, yep. That's it. I'm just predominantly on Instagram. Yeah. Quite quiet on other platforms, so I just didn't yep. see the point. But that's it. More than happy. I always get back to people when they message me, regardless if it's just anything. It's nice to be nice and give a bit of value on it. 
Absolutely, bro. Couldn't agree more, man. Slide into those DMs, reach out to Dean, say good day. Uh, nothing weird. Yeah, nothing too weird anyway. Hi. <laughs> Sick, bro. <laughs> man, mate, just again, pleasure come, having, having you on, bro. Mate, we'll have to get you back on after the Arnold's, mate, and uh, talk about your victory over there because no doubt you're going to kick everyone's fucking ass. Try. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Thanks very much, brother. Perfect, my man. Nice one. See you, See you bro. Cheers. Is that the recording done?